And hopefully now you see our introductory slide and I welcome everyone to today's class. I'm going to take you through about 20 to 25 minutes, maybe 30. Uh, if you have questions in the interim, please put them in the chat box. We'll try to address them, but we'll certainly stay on as long as you need at the end of the session today to answer any questions that you have. So let's begin. And first, I want to thank Jeff and the team for inviting us to this Boca Tech Talk. Welcome to the Art of Blending Design with Technology. This course has been developed by Leon Speakers, and we're proud to be partnering with organizations like ASID that bring the notion of designing and integrating technology solutions to the forefront with designers and decorators and integrators like yourselves. Over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be talking about what it means to integrate technology into your designs, what it takes, and how you can do it. We're going to dive into what we see as a profound step forward in integrating technology into modern decor in beautiful ways, opening up the opportunity for you to add value to your designs, to provide an improved client experience, and ultimately to grow your business. So a little bit of boilerplate. As you know, this is a certified course. It's worth one credit or LU. Uh, the course credits are earned on completion of this course and be, will, will be reported for you and certificates of completion will be provided uh, afterwards. Any questions related to specific materials or methods or services will be addressed at the conclusion, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, a little bit of boilerplate there. Got to do it. And now let's begin. This presentation is copyrighted, copyrighted by Leon Speakers. So this is the course overview. Audio and video components have changed tremendously since the first radio broadcast was transmitted in 1906. As the world accepted new communications methods and devices, the home environment would be forever transformed to incorporate larger and more prominent technology. Well, while that technology has reached new heights in performance, the design world has found it challenging to incorporate these systems into the overall aesthetic of these occupied spaces. Against the typical standards of high-end design and architecture, in-home audio and video systems often miss a massive opportunity to introduce deep levels of design and customization. So this presentation will introduce you, this entire audience, to custom audio and video solutions that can be seamlessly incorporated into residential and commercial spaces. Technology has become an integral part of the modern home, but as much as homeowners love it, it's often challenging for people in our industry to incorporate it in a design-friendly way. My company, Leon Speakers, a high-end custom audio manufacturer, will show you how AV can enhance any space with products that are custom built to beautifully integrate into a unique environment. Upon completion of this course, you, the student, will be able to do these five things. You'll understand the evolution of the AV technology, basically going all the way back in history. You'll be able to explain the current state of that technology and audio devices, including a very basic understanding of how a speaker works. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about that today. We will recognize with you the importance of collaborating with CDA integrators and integrating technology early in the design process. I can't stress that enough. Mm. You'll also consider the aesthetic and performance options available when specifying AV technology. And finally, through a series of case studies that I'm going to present, we'll show you solutions to common challenges integrating technology into a space. So let's begin. Section one, the evolution of AV. This section will provide a brief history of the evolution of audio and video components and the complexity that we're all experiencing with today's home technology. So a little bit of a history lesson. Over the last 80 years, we've seen a dizzying range of media options and devices come and go from the first electronic turntable to the first mass produced RCA television sets all the way to today where consumers have the ability to stream media right on their phones and their TVs. Consider that the first mass produced RCA TV was introduced in 1946. It had furniture like aesthetics, a design that featured fabric and hardwood, both of which invited the TV into the home. It was a piece of furniture really, if you think about it. By 1947, more than 15,000 homes had a television. And in those early days, TVs were luxurious cornerstones 
of the living room, decked out with these great materials, something you'd be very proud to show your guests. In 1955, Dieter Rams, an industrial designer and academic, became a champion for design that was unobtrusive, believing in a less but better philosophy of design. His vision resulted in a truly timeless quality of products that were developed under his watchful eye at a company that we refer to as Brown, but in Germany is called Braun, through the 1950s. And at the same time, Bakelite radios were introduced in a variety of forms and finished in signature colors. If we were together in a room as we normally present this, I would show you a Bakelite radio. We have one to pass around the room. All of these uh, technologies evoke timeless qualities and style. Now, here we are in this new millennium with the rapid rate of technological innovation, the move to mass production and the reduction in size of some of that technology, all of which makes this very, very accessible, but at the same time, impossible for designers to keep up with. Ultimately, compromises are made. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, having to, trying to avoid those compromises. Here's Dieter Rams. As I mentioned in the slide before, he believed that good design is as little design as possible. His inspired designs still influence tech companies today. You might see some similarities between the original Apple iPod aesthetic and the design of his transistor radio. Another great example of timeless design shown here are the Charles and Ray Eames chair, something you would see even today in a furniture store. Very, very popular, very timeless. Early media devices like radios and television sets, and by the way, note that furniture-like design of the Philco TV there on the left. They were considered an integral part of a home's decor. As such, manufacturers paid attention to design as well as functionality. So what makes these pieces stand the test of time? They have the simplest of designs. They have real materials. They have intuitive functionality. So to begin to incorporate technology was to add to the visual and sensory experience without adding to the visual complexity. Now, we've covered some of the history of the tech and you see in this photo how simple technology can seem. In reality, though, there's a massive amount of complexity involved. What was once introduced as one simple plug and play TV by one manufacturer now involves several manufacturers and trades to create one unified aesthetic. It is now much more difficult to achieve simple design. The introduction of plasma and LCD TVs made displays thinner than ever before. And any semblance of high audio quality was then off-boarded, leaving room for only small, underpowered speaker components. Not only do speakers often live separate from the display, but you're also dealing with other components, like receivers and amplifiers, cable boxes, smart devices. Additionally, as the technology gets cheaper, TV screens have also exploded in size and have made their way into more rooms in the home. Keep in mind that more than half of US households have three or more televisions in their home. So this is a huge opportunity for integrators and designers to introduce more design forward technology into that home. Today, discerning homeowners are demanding that aesthetic and they want it to be considered with the design of a custom AV system. And by the way, the challenges don't stop with the TV. For decades, people were limited to television broadcasts that could be accessed from local stations via antenna. In the 80s, cable and satellite television changed that game. And more recently, with advances in network bandwidth, streaming devices have become more prevalent, pushing content to customers wherever they choose to consume it. So with all of these technologies, the management of media and devices throughout the home has given rise to automation systems. And this has exploded to countless physical devices that can all speak to each other and have the ability to control. So the question is, what does all this mean? Why is this important to you? First and foremost, this technology is not going away. In fact, things as commonplace as doorbells are now enhanced by smart technology. Statistics show that the smart house market will approach $40 billion this year in the US alone due to the added convenience, productivity, and lifestyle enhancements that it promises. And nearly half of millennials already own devices. And by the way, millennials are now in their mid-30s, 
with strong and increasing buying power in the market. And those who already own at least one product, 70% of them have said that they're willing to buy and soon will buy another. It's more important now than ever to embrace this field and master the art of integrating technology seamlessly. So designers need to be thinking about how to, not if you should, how to integrate technology in a design friendly way. And in this complex world of home tech, we want you to be armed with options, ways to seamlessly integrate tech so that it's thoughtful, so that it's purposeful, and so that it's beautiful. You can give homeowners an experience beyond their expectations and add value beyond what the DIY community could offer or muster. Before we jump to solutions, let's dig into some basics of audio and speaker design. I'm going to do a very short audio class just to arm you with some terminology and some knowledge. Although speakers themselves are delivering higher quality audio using much smaller devices, sound systems as a whole must be thoughtfully designed to provide the exceptional performance that discerning clients demand. So while having a deep and extensive technical understanding of speaker tech is necessary, it's important to understand the basic functionality and what's important and why your clients need this. So let's start with the why. How much does sound matter? Consider sound and the role it plays in people's lives. This is critical in understanding why it's important to integrate it into a home. When it comes to TV, people watch more TV than at any other time in history. Not surprising. People are able to access the music or content that they identify with, that sets the tone for the day, that fits their mood by a simple touch of a button. On demand, to quote Chris Woodford, it's probably the first thing you experience when you wake up in the morning, when you hear birds chirping or your alarm clock bleeping away. Sounds fill our days with excitement and meaning, when people talk to us, when we listen to music, or when we hear interesting programs on the radio and TV. Sound may also be the last thing you hear at night when you listen to your heartbeat and you drift gradually into sleep. Sound is fascinating. So how do we hear sound? Well, primarily through speakers. And speakers are not just circles in the ceiling. They are literally everywhere now. They're used when a phone rings or when a text message comes in. They alert you to a dangerous situation. They inform you of the day's news. They fill the time on a long drive. They entertain you and they connect with you. Countless speakers surround you daily. You probably don't even realize it. And they fill your world with sound and emotion. Sound affects us physiologically in very powerful ways. And as a designer and an integrator, you have a direct impact on how your client experiences sound and how it's designed to fit into their lives. You, you decide early on whether the sound is thoughtfully designed to seamlessly fit into a space or if it's an afterthought. So how does a speaker work? A little basic. A basic speaker consists of a coil sandwiched between a magnet and a comb. When current is applied to the coil, it becomes an electromagnet and it responds to the permanent magnet by moving toward or away from it. This movement shifts air and recreates sound based on those incoming signals. The combination of the magnet, the coil, and the cone is often referred to as a driver. You've probably heard that term. Typical speaker systems utilize multiple drivers in order to accurately reproduce sound and give listeners a full acoustic experience. A woofer is a driver that reproduces mid to low frequencies, like voices. In contrast, a tweeter is a driver that reproduces only the highest frequencies, like triangles or cymbals in an orchestra. Larger drivers move at slower frequencies, therefore create lower sounds. Smaller drivers move at higher frequencies, creating higher sounds. A subwoofer is a woofer used only for the lowest part of the audio spectrum, below 200 hertz. Consumer subwoofer designs are fairly straightforward, and they often consist of a very large single driver in a big black cabinet. A challenge with subwoofer integration often arises due to the sheer size of that cabinet. We'll show you some solutions for that today. Now, one more thing, powered versus passive speakers. Powered or active speakers receive the signal from an internal amplifier. Think of plug and play like a boom box. You see it there on the slide. Passive speakers receive signals from an offboard or a separate amplifier. 
passive speakers often have higher integration possibilities, which is why they tend to be used more in custom homes. Now let's look at cabinet enclosures. The drivers of a speaker, remember the woofer and the tweeter that we just talked about, are mounted in an enclosure or a cabinet. The role of that enclosure is to prevent sound waves emanating from the back of a driver from interfering with those coming out the front. Sound is often about the movement of air. The cabinet size and the volume play a massive role in that process. It also speaks a lot to why TV coming at a very, very, excuse me, sound coming at a very, very thin TVs tends to be very poor quality. Not a lot of room to move air. Typically, the larger the driver, the more cabinet space is needed to move more air. The materials used to create speaker cabinets have a big influence on the quality of the sound that the speaker will ultimately create. Ideally, materials should be rigid and dense to avoid creating unwanted resonance. Wood, plastic, and aluminum are the materials most often used in speaker cabinets and baffles. Many speakers that are hand-built are constructed out of a high-quality cabinet material, such as MDF or wood or aluminum. These materials allow for a highly customized end product. So now that you know what a speaker is, here you can find many different shapes and sizes and examples, and I'm going to take you through this. Uh, they can be selected from to include it in a system to suit a desired experience. It's important to point out the sound bar in the middle. It's perhaps the fastest growing category of speakers in the market today. Estimates show that the global sound bar market will reach over 40 million unit sales next year. One reason for this enormous growth is that sound bars have proven to be the perfect balance of design and function. They greatly enhance the sound coming from the TV, and yet they can be mounted discreetly on a tabletop or to the wall or to the TV itself. Other options that come in the form of in-wall and in-ceiling speakers, which allow background music to emanate within a room's structural elements. However, when used with the TV's centric systems, they tend not to necessarily perform as well as sound bars. It's difficult for the listener's ears to place the sound to the person that's on the screen, unless that sound is coming at them from in front of them. Lastly, another rapidly growing speaker category is the smart speaker segment, led by brands like Apple and Google and Amazon and Sonos. This category is projected to reach over $30 billion by 2024, and it incorporates streaming media, home system controls, and voice control. Uh, the few brands in this category can truly focus on audio quality. See, there's a disparity there between that convenience and the audio quality. They tend to lean more towards the integration benefits. This leaves room for improvements as ultimately people seek better listening experiences and more design options when using systems for music playback. Okay, so we've talked about drivers. We've talked about the cabinet. We've talked a little bit about amplifiers. Taking a look at the bigger picture of an audio system, there are three basic components, the source, the receiver or amplifier, and the speaker. The source is where the electronic audio signal is generated. This could be a live source, such as a microphone or an electric musical instrument, or it could be a playback source like an iPhone or a record, CD, or a TV. The signal then moves to the processor or amplifier. The amplifier manipulates the signal, sends it to the speaker. The speaker converts the signal into sound waves so that it can be heard. A simple system could be the, like an old fashioned, an old school boom box that we saw earlier. The sound would be the radio antenna or the tape deck in the boom box. That's the source. The amplifier is built in. The signal is then transferred to the built in speakers. It's all in one piece, plug and play. Another example of a simple system is a wireless speaker system. Consider the iPhone as the source of the audio signal. The transfer of the signal happens over a Wi Fi network to a wireless speaker that receives that signal, plays the sound through its, old, its own onboard amplifier and speaker. A clear benefit to this type of simple system is that components can be added without physically running wires to connect them. The speakers still require an electrical outlet and sufficient bandwidth. 
More complex systems are typically designed with an amplifier that's external to the speaker. This type of system often requires components to be physically connected to another, one another to transfer that signal. And they also tend to deliver a much higher quality audio performance. So when it comes to custom AV systems, discerning clients will demand that as much attention is paid to aesthetics as is paid to performance. This section, section three, will emphasize the importance of including key players and stakeholders early in the process of designing and specifying AV systems for residential spaces. Unlike typical AV solutions, which are often off-the-shelf products selected at the end of a design build process, custom AV solutions require a more thoughtful and deliberate approach. This process should be including trained professionals, such as CD integrators, who can identify and resolve potential challenges early in the process. Can't stress that enough. So, let's talk about this now. With the added complexity, architects and interior designers should approach AV projects with the same regard as they do other systems. For example, when they design a house, an architect may determine the location of lighting fixtures, but he or she still needs a specialist to help design and implement the installation of those lighting features. Similarly, to successfully integrate an AV system into an overall design, architects and designers should collaborate with certified professionals to plot and diagram locations of wires and components. This is especially important when tying the AV system into the home's electrical system. Finally, audio video systems can seem intimidating in part because they're often installed in completed structures or finished rooms. It's far better to incorporate AV in the context of a home design early in the process. Customers may tell their architect they simply want a TV on the wall and a couple of speakers in the ceiling. But modern custom AV systems require unique challenges. They present unique challenges, rather. Displays are often so large that they take up a considerable amount of wall space. Moreover, systems include many components, most of which require their own power source. These components must also be compatible. They must speak the same wireless or wired language to each other. And if the AV system is to be integrated with other smart home systems, such as lighting or HVAC or security, those components must also be compatible. Again, the thought must begin early in the process. CEDIA is the leading international trade association for companies and professionals who manufacture, design, and integrate goods and services for the connected home. It includes over 3,700 member companies and serves more than 30,000 industry professionals. CEDIA provides access to industry-leading education, certification, research, and consumer awareness. CEDIA professionals can specify, procure, and install systems, and even manage systems beyond the installation, much like an IT professional. Design professionals can use the CEDIA website's Find a Pro search function to find a certified professional in their region, and the search function allows the user to filter them by an area of specialization. The following slides depict a comparison between com creating installs of the past or partnering with an integrator who provides balance in design and technology. We're going to do a little before and after now. So we know what you're used to seeing, poorly planned speaker installations that neglect proper placement, lack creativity and style. They're prominently displayed all over the internet. This is at the detriment of the integrators that can offer a value that surpasses these old standards. We need to focus on creating the future of AV and design integration and not to continue to recreate the past. So examples here I show. TVs are so thin that there are no speakers built in or the speakers are very, very poor. The wires and cables are often visible after installation. TVs are often so big that they're an eyesore. 85 inch TVs, six feet wide are like placing an appliance as tall as a refrigerator on the wall. Uh, in the center slide there, center photo, in-ceiling speakers that potentially could litter your ceiling and take the sound away from the source, creating a suboptimal television experience. And then third there on the right, obtrusive speaker designs that resemble a spaceship in your living room or a coffin that will, <laughs> that will come one day be buried in. 
Um, sometimes they are enormously large and rest on the floor, taping, taking valuable floor space. So let's do uh, before and after. Create that same sound experience that you would have on the left with an integrated design that's on the right. Uh, no speakers on the floor, everything clean, custom fit, beautifully sized. Another example, um, a bulky floor standing stereo uh, from the 70s and 80s. We saw a lot of this. I had a pair of speakers like that in my home and they took up a lot of floor space and they took up a lot of mind share in terms of the aesthetic of the room. On the right, you see the TV embedded there above the fireplace with speakers to the left and right of it. Integrated, custom fit to the size of the display. Very clean look, no cables visible. Another example, a two channel audio setup. Um, at the top there, again, the speakers on the floor, taking space away from other design possibilities. And then the opportunity to move those speakers to a tabletop uh, and something that is more seamless and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, one more thing to show you, uh, the side view of very often of a TV mounted on a wall can really be fairly ugly. You see the wall mount, you see the cables behind the TV. Uh, on the right side of that slide is a product that hides all of that and in a sense dresses the TV. We're going to show you some examples of slides coming up and case studies using a product like that. While some homeowners prefer a dedicated space for the home theater, there are trends in the AV industry now allowing for theater-like systems to be designed into any space in a home. Fortunately, there are many appealing design options for moving the typical home theater from an isolated space, such as a media room or a basement, and integrating it into living areas. The top left image shows integrated vertical speakers that can be discreetly placed so that they don't clutter a space. The speakers are actually to the left and right of the TV, hardly even visible. Displays can be elegantly hidden behind art or enhanced with custom casings, as in the lower left. And I'll show you examples of those coming up. In some cases, the AV platform can be transformed into the main design element in a room. A manufacturer might create an artistic solution, such as something called a sound sculpture that combines audio with art, with a sculpture. With this solution, it's no longer necessary to make a choice between art and functional components. The two are one and the same. See the image in the upper right. Finally, audio can be transformed into the actual sound elements of a space, a true blending of design with technology. Again, I'll show you some examples. This section will offer you as the architect or designer an overview of the performance and design options available from custom AV manufacturers, including options for incorporating art into AV design. Some AV component manufacturers who are paying attention to the aesthetics and the performance are offering high performance speakers that be, can be customized to each client's needs and preferences. These include handcrafted speaker cabinets made with solid wood or MDF, which can be painted or finished to complement the room's decor or the furniture in the room. Furthermore, the dimensions of many speakers can be custom built to match any dimensions that are needed in the space or to a specific location or to a specific piece of furniture. I'll show you some examples of that in a case study coming up. Some companies can create completely customized solutions for any environment, indoor or out, so that the hardware works in harmony with the design elements of the space. We'll take a closer look at some of those solutions in a bit. Unfortunately, many speakers are still designed strictly to fit a price point or a need for sound with little attention to aesthetics. Some manufacturers address this issue by offering custom cabinets, for popular off-the-shelf speakers. This can be crafted from a variety of hardwoods, and in addition to their aesthetic contribution, the wood adds a dimension of richness to the speaker's sound. The discrete placement of AV components can help streamline an AV system and reduce its impact on a room. Mounting brackets can not only ensure the strategic placement of speakers 
to enhance the acoustic experience, but can also help a system appear more integrated by mounting them to a wall or a display or to a table or any piece of furniture. These brackets include multiple points of adjustment and the ability to manage and hide wiring. Components can be installed in a wall or a ceiling, creating a surface that's flush with the wall. That's another way to streamline the AV system. One of the downsides of having many separate components in an AV system is that they can make a room look cluttered. Some manufacturers can customize soundbars so that they integrate seamlessly with the TV display. These soundbars connect directly below, above or below the display and match its dimensions perfectly. Additionally, by attaching the audio directly to the video, we talked about this earlier, the overall viewing experience can be enhanced and seem more natural, as if the person on screen is actually delivering their lines right there in the room. As mentioned earlier, often when in-wall ceiling speakers or in-ceiling speakers are used, the sound seems to come from disparate points of the room, and the audio may seem detached from that on-screen experience. As with custom speaker cabinets, some manufacturers offer custom cabinets that accommodate other sound bars to make them even look better. And these cabinets can include acoustically transparent grills that can accommodate the unique features and contours of any display. You can also find sound bars that store other AV components within the speaker cabinet itself. That's really, really useful. Unifies the various AV components into an aesthetically pleasing way. Some examples of small components that fit into the cabinet include something like an Apple TV or a webcam, a mini PC, a Roku device, an Amazon Echo Dot, among others. Another approach is to enhance the display itself. Much in the spirit of an integrated media furnishing of the 1960s, some manufacturers offer customized frames. There's an example on that photo, and we saw one earlier. The frames accommodate either the display or display plus a sound bar. And these displays are crafted from solid hardwoods or painted MDF. And so they can be designed to match the rest of a room style and decor. This solution also conceals the wiring and the mounting hardware, contributing to a more elegant, and uncluttered aesthetic. Additionally, integrating a built-in soundbar into this frame, it's a simple way to deliver that sound and integrate it together in one aesthetic. Here's another example that's a Samsung frame TV that you see on the wall there and a speaker that's been designed to work from an aesthetic point of view with that frame TV. As displays have grown larger, entertainment systems have tended to take over the room. The result is essentially a big black screen mounted to a wall in some of the most design sensitive rooms in the home. While some may feel the performance benefits and the usage of the AV systems outweigh the loss, many clients prefer to use their wall space to express their individual design tastes by hanging artwork and decor. Unfortunately, custom AV design can open up opportunities for displaying art and design pieces without sacrificing the system's performance, without that compromise that we talked about earlier. Some manufacturers offer moving art screens or lifts, which completely conceal a TV with a piece of art. That's the example in the center. In motorized screen solutions, a piece of electronically or professionally produced artwork can disappear. It scrolls up into a recessed frame, revealing the TV behind it and operating like a shade. In motorized lift solutions, original artwork or sculptures or decorative panels can slide vertically or horizontally while concealing the TV and revealing the TV as you wish. These solutions can be customized for any size display or any desired style including recessed into the wall or flush mount systems. Some AV component manufacturers are addressing the problem of limited wall space by offering functional AV components that double as art. Remember earlier, we used the term sound sculpture. You see one there on the right. Um, a sound sculpture can turn a visual piece of art into a speaker. We previously saw audio solutions doubling as mantle applications. We also talked a lot about where to put speakers around or behind a piece of art. 
And there are examples that I'll be showing you where we blend all of that together in the design of a home. So customize finish options. There are lots of ways to customize these products. Subtle or bold, classic or modern, simple customizations can help you provide a unique solution. Generally, you can review what's on the slide, but don't go too deeply into specifics yet. I'm gonna show you some real examples coming up. Okay, section five is about case studies. We're nearing the end of the presentation. What we've done here is we've provided a few case studies for you where you can actually see real examples of how this integration of technology and design aesthetic have come together. Case study number one, featured in Veranda Magazine, each room in this luxury Fifth Avenue, New York apartment contains livable yet classically inspired pieces that model American craftsmanship. The challenge here was to integrate a multi-room audio system into the apartment while complementing the interior design with this eclectic but tasteful mix of textures and colors. The audio manufacturer worked closely with interior designer Thomas O'Brien of Aero Studios to create a series of completely custom speakers that not only create an immersive home theater experience, but also blend harmoniously into the spaces. You may not even notice it, but among the decor is a custom sound bar there that's featured in the wall unit below the TV. Hidden in plain sight, in the guest bedroom, in wall speakers wrapped in matching custom fabric grill cloth to create a completely seamless look. Essentially, material that is acoustically transparent, which means that sound can travel through it, allowing you to literally hide the speakers in that room. An ultra thin custom subwoofer constructed with reclaimed oak and stained a rich espresso tone to match the rest of the room. Here it's built to fit under a piece of furniture. It's completely invisible, completely unobtrusive. Um, in another room, an in-wall subwoofer was painted to match the custom Ralph Lauren wall paint. So the subwoofer is in the wall, off the floor, not necessarily visible, not obtrusive, and in fact, part of the overall decoration of the room. Okay, case study number two. A simple and elegant high-end audio solution for the home of famed interior designer Vicente Wolf. Wolf's interiors are characterized by a clean aesthetic and eclectic art. The goal was to complement this aesthetic by creating a super simple design with high audio quality and a blend of hidden and exposed technologies. The design includes several large TVs which were left exposed and fitted with custom sound bars. These sound bars provide high audio quality, but they're less obtrusive than standalone speakers, certainly better than anything on the floor, and they fit into the clean, quiet aesthetic of the room. Custom high-end speakers were designed for the space using Wolf's paint line to match the highly specialized color palette. For example, this speaker cabinet blends seamlessly into the rest of the kitchen island cabinet, but the round drivers are left exposed. The dark round shapes provide an interesting and dynamic contrast to the rest of the light colored cabinet. Case study number three. This project by Premier Group in Indiana won a 2018 CD award as the integrated home of the year in the Americas. A motorized art lift was designed to cover that television that's on the left. The homeowner wanted a TV in that particular location because it's the only wall space in direct view from her office nook, which is just off the kitchen. The art lift solves her need for a TV with the ability to disguise it as artwork when it's not being used. The side mount speakers that are uh, to the left and right of that television create a polished look to accomplish that 85 inch TV in a home that didn't overlook any details. The television was a completely custom and then recessed into the fireplace wall, which was made of concrete panels with two inch steel frames. And it sits perfectly symmetrical over the custom made fireplace. I don't 
personally recommend placing a TV above a fireplace, but there are quite a few uh, designs in this presentation that show that. Case study number four, my favorite case study. If you're a music fan, you've heard of Muscle Shoals. Muscle Shoals is a sound recording studio in the South, in the United States, historic for some of the music that has been recorded in that location. And we're gonna show you examples of how this space, not a home necessarily, but a place of uh, beauty was uh, presented in terms of how the technology works with the space. A retro TV treatment there. A modern electronics meets classic 1970s style. Black walnut custom media frame surrounds the TV to make the TV look period correct. In a sense, starting to look more and more like that Philco TV that we saw early in the presentation. Real fabric was salvaged from a vintage Fender amplifier to make this work with the aesthetic and also the concept of the room that we're in. To finish off this final case study, these vintage on-wall speakers featured black walnut to match with the wall paneling in the space, along with detailed custom millwork and vintage radio fabric grill cloth. This Muscle Shoals project truly represents the ultimate in design customization. And for those who work with audio and love music, it's a true connection to music. So we're near the end of our uh, presentation today. I'm gonna summarize for you and then I'll be glad to stay on and answer any questions that you have. In summary, we look forward to partnering with all of you to help bridge the gap between design and technology. We hope that you leave here today feeling confident with the technology you've expected to integrate with your interior design, that you choose the right partners, integrators, trades, and manufacturers. We ask you to collaborate with those partners very early in the process. We want you to understand what your options are. And finally, to be a true champion of the space that seamlessly blends design with technology. That's the end of today's presentation. I very much appreciate you joining me today, and I'd love to answer any questions that you have, whether they're directed at me or at Jeff. Hey, Paul, thanks so much for that. You have some great pictures in there. It was, uh, it was really, really good. I have a few comments here while we're waiting um, for questions. One thing is for sure is that if you look at the trends of AV technology with respect to TVs, TVs are getting larger and thinner. That That is ex just like Wi-Fi networks get faster. I can guarantee you TVs are getting bigger and, uh, you know, thin is the, is the new black, right? But as Paul was pointing out, the whole idea of a speaker is pushing air volume. So if you have a really, really, really thin speaker, it's not gonna sound very good at all. The point of this is most of the artwork I saw in Paul's um, presentations here showed a little bit of a bump out where the TV was. And um, down here in South Florida, where the first floor is typically concrete block, some houses are block or poured concrete all the way, both stories, we run into cases where we can't really recess things into the wall. Um, but that is the ideal way of doing this because nobody wants to see any wires. They don't want to see the TV mount. They want to look gun sight right along the edge of that TV and see just the thickness of the TV. The solution for that for both the speaker and the sound bar would be to recess it into the wall. The other thing we have to be very careful with is don't create a solution that works for a day one installation that can't be upgraded over time. Um, I would say that, that is, um, that's the number one issue we've got where people are stuck with five or 10 year old technology. They want that new 4K TV, but they don't wanna redo their entire living room just for the AV um, because you know, they've got beautiful finishes and it just fits you, you know, the TV fit. And the bezel sizes, if you look at the new Samsungs, they're disappearing their new lifestyle stuff, there's really no bezel anymore. So a, a 75 inch TV, or I should say more like a 50 inch TV, you could replace it with something that's larger because the screen 
itself is the same physical external dimensions, even though the viewing size just got larger. So we got to be very careful when we do these things where um, we work together and think about ways like what would that look like five years from now when they want a bigger TV? Am I going to have to redo the entire wall and and turn this into a construction project? Because that would prevent the uh, the homeowner from being able to enjoy new technologies. Um, I've got clients that are still using plasmas and don't even have Netflix because they can't have a smart TV and they just don't want to go through the trouble. And that's that's a shame, really. Um, let's see, there's a couple of questions that are coming in here. Let me look over at my screen, make this a little bit bigger. Um, let's see, a, uh, a recording will be sent around um, automatically at the end of this um, um, presentation, so you will have that. Uh, would like to know more about the brackets used for motorized lifts or art screens. Yeah, there's several types. Um, there is um, the one I think was show in yours, Paul, was the art moved, the TV didn't move, right? So, so the TV is static and the art goes up and down. I've seen two types: a rolling type, like a like a shade, and then one where the art is actually flat static does not roll and the entire picture frame moves up and down so if you've got you know, expensive handmade artwork i would go that route um if it's uh just like a rolling um screen that you're really doing for the purpose only of hiding the tv not necessarily to display a cherished piece of artwork then then that one might be less expensive but in that case the uh the tv actually recesses into a back box in the wall and um, you know, there's a roller that goes up and down. Uh, let's see, um, what else do we have here? Let's see where going. Mount TVs on an existing stone wall. That's a hard one. Um, that is a hard one. It, I mean, there's no, there's no way to hide depth without recessing it into the wall. So um, depending on what you've got, you might be able to chip into um, you know, the stonework and recess a back box that can hide the mount. Um, so you don't need like a hole the size of the TV, you just need to hide the mount. And, uh, and then you've got to figure out if the speaker bar is gonna be recessed below the TV into the same back box or whether that's gonna be some other kind of solution. One of the my favorite ones is that picture that you had there with the TVs flanking the 85 inch TV in like a dual monoral kind of setup. Um, makes the TV look wider but not taller this way, which actually helps with fireplaces because you've got a mantle and it's too high anyway to begin with typically. Um, and so, you know, putting a sign bar under the TV would make the TV go higher. And, uh, and and that would defeat uh, the purpose there. I don't know, Paul. Do you have any comments on that one? Yeah, I mean, we, we we've seen projects uh, of all shapes and sizes, literally, uh, where we see the opportunity to, in a sense, either dress a TV, hide a TV, or add audio, both left and right, below or above. So there are almost no uh, limits to what we can accomplish in that context. Gotcha. Um, so one of the other things that comes up a lot is designers in, 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 and usually end customers think that everything can be wireless and they say, oh, we'll just use a wireless speaker and that solves the problem. Um, it doesn't, it creates new problems. Electricity still is not wireless. Um, I mean, sure there's inductive chargers, but to drive, to drive speakers, you're going to need a connection to something. Right, so whether it's power um, because of a wireless speaker, but the wireless speaker creates lip sync delays. And I, I've had some very serious unsolvable problems where I've had to replace wireless speakers that customers insisted on and they, they were owner supplied, but mount them and no matter what you say, they don't believe you until it doesn't <laughs> work. And then now you're stuck with a problem of trying to get a wire to places where um, you know, it would have been easier six months prior. So let's not rely on wireless speakers as the end all be all because these wireless speakers need to communicate with one another to create that sound field. And they do that um, 
over wireless means that there is going to be a delay. And the human ear can hear 30 milliseconds, which is just shy of a half a second. You'll pick that up and it'll sound like an echo. The other issue that you'll have is if there's an adjacent room with audible speakers, say, playing um, the same uh, sound, it'll echo from room to room. So you've got to be very careful with that. And the, you know, the whole wireless thing really uh, sounds good in theory, but in practice, it gets us into trouble. Um, uh, let's see, there's a good question here. Um, with sound bars, are we moving away from surround sound? No, absolutely not. The sound bar is a crucial component of the front left center right array. If you're a pure audiophile, you really want the left and right speakers farther away so you have more channel separation. Um, with the larger TVs, it kind of <laughs> solves itself. But that's only part of the surround experience. You would still need size reards and in some cases even ceiling mounted Dolby Atmos speakers. So the surround sound effects, um, if you really truly want the surround sound and the depth and what they call immersive audio or 3D audio, then you're gonna have left um, center right in the front by the TV, below the TV or alongside the TV. You will have rears, you'll have sides and you will have ceiling. Jeff, I just I wanted, if I may add to what you just said, um, we talked about a stat in our presentation that uh, the average home has at least three televisions. Um, and it's important to make a distinction between a TV that's being used in a cinema type application and all the other TVs in the home. But you have the ability to enhance the audio for all of those TVs. They wouldn't necessarily need surround sound or a theater like environment, but they do need better audio. Oh, I, I agree. Um, and, and that's actually one of the, the mantras that I do is each room should have a purpose. You know, you don't want every room to have surround sound. Well, now what differentiates one room from the other? If I watch news in my office, I need to hear vocals of a newscaster, but I'm not, you know, maybe I'm not really interested in, in music. I'm just really watching the news or in a bathroom with a mirror TV. It's about hearing the news and clearly hearing the dialogue. When you're in a cinema, like you say, well, now you need more speakers. You need the subwoofer. You need that channel separation that I talked about. And it's a, it's a bigger problem to solve. Master bedrooms have become movie watching locations. A lot of people love to watch movies in bed. Um, and some people just want it to fall asleep to, and, and they really don't want the, the noise, and they would rather have, a, you know, sort of a dual headphone kind of a setup where they can watch uh, TV with the speakers on, and then when one partner falls asleep, the other one can put headphones on. That's a decidedly different design, but I, I definitely think you should think through how a room should be used and pick the right size TV and the right location so you're not you know, craning your neck to see it, it should be comfortable to look at and and the speaker should be aiming ideally at your ears and not at your head. Paul, do you have other things to add to that? Uh, I, well, I agree with everything that you just said. I, I think it's important also to keep in context this idea uh, of different rooms and different applications. Um, you know, we have a, a kind of a theory within our company that we want to own the display. And what that means for us is that everywhere there is a display, we have a product that we think can either enhance the performance of that display or in some way hide that technology if the room requires it to be hidden. And so uh, for us as a company, we're looking at every room that has a display. And by the way, that includes commercial spaces where you're doing telepresence or video conferencing applications. We also have a whole suite of products for that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the tone case. The, the, uh, this is a, a, a technology that hides, um, in our case, a lot of people want these Sonos um, sound bars. And um, Sonos isn't really true surround sound, but it is a lot better than what you get out of the box with a TV. It's just that they're kind of ugly. And um, when you wrap them with the with that, you had a picture of, of one that looked very similar to uh, what I would call a, um, a tone case where the sound bar goes in it, this thing wraps around it, and then it fits the dimensions of the TV. So it really looks like it's a custom made um, product, but you're really hiding a mass produced product into a custom made enclosure. Yeah, that's one of our best selling 
products. We've partnered with Sonos a, a few years ago to develop some products to enhance their products. Um, and so uh, that product now, we've just introduced a new version of it, which will work with the new Sonos Arc. The new Sonos Arc is their new version of their Play Bar. And we'll also work with the Sonos Beam, which is a, also a, a, a TV audio enhancement product from Sonos. So we, we see opportunities to work with them to improve their products as well. And let's face it, it's a, it's a really, really easy product to use. Sonos, very intuitive, uh, really great user interface. Not the greatest audio performance, but we have products now that we feel can enhance and improve that audio too. Right. And you know, here's something that maybe most people don't know. You mentioned the, uh, the Sonos soundbar that's been around forever, and then they just came out with this new one called the Arc. Okay. Um, what's happened is all of the new 4K TVs with like Netflix and Amazon Prime built into them as of June of last year. So we're talking June of 2019. There was like this silent little upgrade where there's a new specification in the TV. You'd order the same model and it came with different software in it. And what's important about that is that the new um, 4K standards and also 8K standards have exposed new audio formats, which no longer work out of the optical port that comes out of these TVs, which is the only thing the old soundbar is supported. It's that little optical wire and all those cheap soundbars out there that have optical only, including Sonos up until just a few months ago, would not be compatible with the sound formats that the TV is capable of producing. And it really sucked because someone would go to Best Buy and buy it and you connect it and the audio lip sync delay was horrible or it would be converted to just plain old stereo because that's the only thing that that soundbar was com compatible with and you weren't hearing all the effects and people would complain. So they came out with this new thing which now actually needs an HDMI cable and it creates a new level of complexity but just upgrading a TV could break your existing Sono setup. And that's the point I'm making is somebody would come in there and like, I just want a TV. And then now nothing else that was there already works with it. And this whole like domino effect uh, happens. And it creates all kinds of aesthetic issues because that old sound bar, you know, maybe it fit and it looked fine. And, and uh, well, now all that's got to change because we've got this domino effect. That's why I like those passive speakers that you've got uh, in the sound bar because you could upgrade the surround processor. It's separate, it's not built into the speaker. So you've got flexibility when technology changes where you don't have to have this ripple effect to rip everything out and start over from scratch just because you want a new larger TV with uh, 4K or 8K um, apps built into it. Agreed. So. He's speaking my language. Uh, uh, Oh, what do we mean by passive sound um, came in? Okay, so passive, it, there was a slide there where um, if you think of the boom box, that has an amplifier in it and speakers in it. So you just plug power into it and you're getting sound. Uh, that's active. Passive, you would have just plain old speakers, drivers was the term uh, Paul used, and then there'd be an amplifier and then there would be a source. So when you connect all of them together, the source creates what we call line level audio that goes into an amp. The amplifier then produces high voltage, which connects to passive speakers, which are just basically drivers in a box. And so you need all these three in, in a row. It gives you all this better performance and flexibility, but there's complexity that comes along with that. Um, already, if there's, I don't see any other questions in there. You can always email me um, if you uh, if you want uh, Jeff at bocatech.com and um, I can answer questions um, for you. I have a question. We'll call you and we could have a discussion. Oh, sorry, somebody uh, got a comment there? Yes, I had a question for Paul about Dolby Atmos. Yes. You yeah. really didn't touch on Dolby Atmos in your presentation. Do you have any comments on Dolby Atmos? So uh, for, for those who are not uh, up to speed, uh, Dolby is probably the leading 
sound technology company in our industry. Uh, they invented basically surround sound uh, and then have now developed new technologies beyond that to enhance the listening experience. And the way that you would normally describe it is if you're sitting in a movie theater, you can hear uh, the helicopter that passes directly over your head and it's as if the sound travels as the helicopter does. You can also hear low frequencies, the boom of a bomb or a, or a rifle shot. Um, all of these technologies were developed by Dolby and they are technologies that are built into devices that power our speakers. So there's nothing in our speaker that has a uh, Dolby technology, whether it's Atmos or any other. Uh, that processing, the processing of the sound is provided by that uh, receiver or amplifier and then uh, provided into our speakers. I did mention the, the new Sonos Arc, uh, the product that we've just developed a product for, and that new Sonos Arc is Atmos compatible, which means that it can deliver sound in that Atmos format. Uh, but it also means that, uh, and I think Jeff mentioned this earlier, it requires an upgrade not only of the speaker, but also of the television to make sure that the entire system is compatible uh, with Atmos. So it is an enhanced listening experience. All of our products as a company, and I'm talking about Leon now, all of our products can be used in an Atmos environment. Um, we are technology agnostic in that sense. Um, and it is a technology that you'll probably be hearing more and more about um, as consumers start to recognize that it exists and then start asking for it. So one one thing I'll add to to that in terms of Atmos is it adds a height layer. And the height layer literally sealing speakers um, that are part of, like you said, when the helicopter pans from the front over the top of your head and then down and back, you actually have the speakers, uh, the the um, steering logic, as they call it, would would follow that it, that uh, helicopter from front to back, and you'll hear that 3D sound that we never heard on regular old Dolby surround sound, which is really just left, right, front, rear kind of stuff. So now we we have the height layer. Some of these um, products that are saying they're Atmos compatible, what they're doing is they're shooting some speakers like a soundbar up at the ceiling and they're counting on it reflecting off the ceiling and coming down. They're not putting discrete speakers in the ceiling. They're they're you know they're trying to trick it a little bit by by um like time delaying it a little bit and then making it hit and bounce off the ceiling. So it's better than not having it and it's good in, in certain situations, but for optimal, optimal, optimal sound, you really want discrete speakers everywhere where the Dolby Atmos specification says to put them. And, and don't don't re rely on reflections. So just throw that out out there because you can have something that says Atmos, and yeah, it's kind of Atmos, but it's kind of faux Atmos, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they call them sound projectors. I've heard that term, which is uh, another play on words. So. Anyway, we're about 10 minutes over the time. It was very interesting. I could talk all day. Paul, I'm sure you and I could talk all week. Um, but I, I want to thank you very much. I really loved your presentation. Some of the best looking photos we've seen. Um, and you've done a, a, an awesome job. You've got a, a voice built for radio. It was very, very, uh, very good, very clear. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you for inviting me. And,